love with Pat's two cents. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Lord's got an issue with some of y'all because, boy, he won't leave this issue alone. I thought I was done with that. I was moving on to the next subject. The Lord popped this scripture in my head, and I said, okay, here we go. Matthew chapter 10, starting at verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Mm, mm, mm. And this is so true. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against him, her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Hmm. That ended at verse 39. Now, that's two cents. Ready, set, go. We think a lot of times that God is willing to be our undercover lover. He is willing for us. You know, here, let me share this with you. Years ago, when I was unsaved, I was totally unsaved. Wasn't in the Lord. Wasn't thinking about the Lord. And I was dating a guy. We would go to, I'd meet him at the nightclub. we go out and eat. He would always make sure it was around 12 midnight. And we'd sit there and we'd go to, to some place that he would designate, you know, hotel, whatever. And we'd make love and do our little do. Listen to this. He never came and dated me in the daylight. Never. You know why? Brother man was married. <laughs> when a man has you as another lover and you're a sidekick and you're a filler, you're the plaything, play toy, the marriage, I don't care what he tells you about that marriage, if he's not willing to prance you around in public, he is not in there with you. His commitment is at home. And he will keep you covered and keep you in the shadows. Because he ain't going to bust up the thing that means the most to him. He just wants you to play with. Well, I understood it. You know, he wasn't the kind I'd want to marry. But he was fun. You hear what I'm saying? So I was willing to settle for that. But God ain't. Pardon the bad English. God ain't. He ain't studying your little pride. If you are not willing to fess up to who you have committed your life to, hey, don't let the doorknob hit you with a good Lord split. You just keep on stepping. God doesn't have time for that. That's why he said take up your cross. If you are willing to lose your life for his sake, think about it. That means you lose your pride. That means you could ruin your reputation. That also means you could lose a job. Ah, uh, your income, your source. No, he's your source. How much are you willing to give up for him? Are you willing to give up anything? Are you willing? Does your reputation mean more to you? Does your wife mean more to you? Does your child mean you go home, you don't talk about Jesus because your wife doesn't want to hear it. What's up with that? 
You don't even sit around her and read your Bible. You tiptoe into the into the bathroom, close the door like you do in your business, and then you slip your little Bible out and do your thing. God ain't going to be your undercover lover. It's just not going to be that. He was not undercover when he was placed on that cross by the people he created. He did it out in the open. He endured the shame and the humiliation and the pain openly, publicly. And you got the nerve to be ashamed of him. How dare you? Okay, that's your tongue lashing for the moment. I just had to make you think. That's for effect. I'm not fussing at you. God told me to deal with this, so you get mad at him. <clears throat> anyway, now, my point is, what if your boss tells you they want you to do something and you know that you would not please God if you did it? What reason would you give? Hmm? Think about it for a second. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. The reason you should give. Sorry, sir, I cannot do that. Why not? Because it would not please God. And I am to obey God rather than man. I mean no disrespect. But I answer to a higher power. You, <laughs> do you have the guts to say that? I wanted to say another word besides guts, but I'm trying to be real ladylike right now. Do you have the guts to say that or not? If you feel yourself shrinking back from that, if you feel fear creeping up in your anatomy at the very thought of putting your job at risk for the sake of an invisible God that half the world doesn't even believe in and the other maybe 20 or 30% has total contempt for, What if your wife says, if you don't drop this God nonsense, if you don't drop this Jesus crap, I'm out of here. I didn't sign up for this uh, religious nonsense of yours. I don't know what's come over you. It may make you cry. It may break your heart. But, what would your response be? Oh, come on, baby. I'll, I'll work on no. If you are to love God more than, you have to have enough backbone to say, baby, you got to do what you got to do, and I understand. And I've got to do what I've got to do. But I love you. What are you willing? I, this is the challenge, I believe, that is being set before you. What are you willing to sacrifice, to place at risk for your love for God, your commitment? What are you willing to place at risk? Anything or nothing at all? If you're not willing to put anything at risk, if, if you're not going to take it that far, God's just got to understand that you are not willing to lose your life for his sake. And he says you are not worthy of him if you're not willing to put your life, your livelihood, your, 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 your reputation, your relationships. If you're not willing to put all that, even your money, if you're not willing to put all that at risk. For the sake of your Savior? 
I'd look a second time and see if I even have a Savior at that point. Because if you're filled with His Holy Spirit, He'll give you the, the guts. Be nice. Boy, that hurts. Give you the guts. <laughs> I want to use the B word, but I'm being really, really, I'm using constraint for some of you religious folk that get too easily offended. He will give you the backbone to stand up by faith on behalf of your Father which is in heaven and on behalf of his ways. I'm going to leave you with that thought. You think about it, stew on it, pray on it, chew on it. God bless you.